Yeah, so, so we're in the UK, uh, my first ever trip over to, to England and um, you know, I think it's been, been a success to be honest. Um, you know, we're finishing up now uh, our, our four day um, experience with a tour around Carroll Road. We brought the boys down here last night, um, they got to see a live Premier League game against Manchester United and then um, we're now getting to see the stadium where um, the Manchester United players and Norwich players were playing last night, so you know, unbelievable experience. Yeah, I think you know it's gone as, as well as it could have. You know, we have to review it now, and I mean, you can always do do better. Um, but for a first hit out, you know, I think we've done um, a sterling effort, and I can't thank the staff enough. You know, from um, from the media guys to, to Juan Carlos, um, Ryan, you know, has been absolute new trooper. You know, and I think everyone's really dug in, and it shows kind of what this project's about. That it's, it's not just the glitz and glamour, but we've got people that uh, are really here for the cause and just to do the best for the players. The best thing probably about the academy is just being able to meet different footballers. Good afternoon and thank you for tuning in to today's live stream. We've got a fantastic match in store for you today. Uh, CD Almineca City uh, are going up against FC Cubillas. Uh, my name's James Dawes and I'm joined in the commentary box today by Jacob Thompson. Jacob, thank you for joining me today. Good result for FC Malaga City earlier, drawing 1-1 to uh, Estepona in a thrilling encounter. How are you feeling after today's result? Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, no, I think it was a really great um, collective performance from the team, um, especially to start off the first game of the season in a new league with, with a point is really important. So hopefully we can continue that. But, you know, on to this game, right? And it's Primera Andalusia action today with the first day of the season. Jacob, I want to come to you and ask how important is it to get off to a good start on the first day uh, of, the, of the season? Obviously, first chance to impress and and see what Almineca City have to offer this year? Well, I mean, with the, with the knowledge of the objectives and the ambitions of this team, you know, wanting to get promoted this year, it's really important to set the standard. And, you know, there isn't a better place to do it than the first game of the season. Get the first three points and, you know, you're on your way to a great start. Yeah, and it's a beautiful day here on the south coast of Spain. Uh, we're at the Francisco Burnett Stadium. Um, pitch is looking in good nick today. Uh, I'd be interested to see uh, the tempo early on, the teams get the ball down and play, I would imagine, and, uh, and see really how we come out and, and set up this evening. So we have the team sheet coming in. Uh, we're obviously waiting for the players to enter out the tunnel. Um, we'll hold off on the, on the starting 11 for now. Um, but Jacob, you've played in this league before. Tell us how difficult it is to, uh, you know, to ultimately get out and get promoted from this division into the Division D and on. I mean, with the, with the structure of the league, it's incredibly difficult to get out. Um, I know last year with the with the Malaga region we had uh, the league was split into two groups and then once winning the group we had to go into a promotion league so not only do you have to win one league but it's almost like you're winning two leagues in a year so to get out of, of this division is incredibly difficult so it's going to be a big ask but I'm sure this team can do it. Absolutely uh, and it's going to be no easy task obviously a long 10 month season there'll be ups downs I'm sure along the way uh, but I mean Eka City certainly aiming, uh, you know, a highly ambitious club and aiming to get that all-important promotion to Division DNR. Um, so we can't wait to see them play. Um, looking at pre-season, you know, it's, it was a slow start. Uh, results not necessarily going their way, but as the squad has formed and we've moved into the, the beginning of the season, you can really start to see the collective coming together. So really interested today to see uh, a few of the new additions in action um, and see how we get on. Um, but as usual in Spain, things are slightly delayed. Um, just waiting for the players to come out. The referees are obviously doing their checks in advance, so uh, we eagerly await in anticipation. Can I just say that statement was very understated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Victor Franco there making his way from the tunnel, a key figure, the assistant manager of this Almineca City side. Looks like the teams are about to emerge. And a healthy crowd here, I must say. There must be 200 plus people in attendance, you know, after COVID it's highly important. And here come the teams led by captain George Jeremy.
Jacob, how important do you think it is for the Aminefi City team to get off to a, to a bright start of the doors here and, and really set the tempo? I think, well, knowing, knowing our start last year wasn't, wasn't the best. We um, lost the first game and drew the second, and it put a huge amount of pressure on the, con the, the next few de games, right? So, you know, obviously you don't want to be in that situation where you're under a lot of pressure. Last year we managed to get ourselves out of that rut, but, you know, obviously you want to start off on a good foot, right? The best place to start is three points in the first game. You get yourself off to a good start and then, you know, try and keep it going. Definitely so. So just reading the team sheet here, we've got Alvaro Mato, Alvaro Mato? Alvaro Mata in goal. Try that one again. Luis, me left back. Ivan Moya, centre back. He'll be joined by Usu uh, as right centre back with Jesus at right back. Um, looks like we're lining up in a 4 2 3 1. So we'll have Juan Lu and Sergi uh, in, in the middle of the park. Uh, Charlie Malman out, out wide. Uh, George playing in as the number 10 um, with Hugo out on the right. And it's uh, Alessandro Briggs that leads the line today at number nine. Highly impressive young man. He scored in our last outing against uh, Cuya Vega, uh, in which Salmineca came away 2 1 uh, winners. Uh, unfortunately, not enough to see them through to the next round um, of the Copa Andalusia, but definitely a performance to build off going into this game. Um, and, you know, looking at that squad now, there's a, there's a great mix of youth and experience within the ranks at Almineca City. Um, you're looking at some, some um, local players in, in Jesus, George, Sergi, that have played at this level and, and higher for a number of years. Um, and then you've got some new blood in there as well with the likes of Alessandro and Hugo really looking to, to make their name here in Spain. So, Jacob, what are you expecting uh, from our boys early on today? I'm expecting the team to kind of bring the game to the opposition, you know. Um, being the favourites in this league, I really, I expect them to kind of put pressure on the opposition and, and try and get an early goal, settle in, and hopefully um, have some good vibes, you know, around the, around the game. Because the last thing you want to do is to start slow and then have the pressure on you. So hopefully they can bring the game to the opposition and, and enjoy, the, enjoy the rest of the game. Absolutely. Well, the referees and the assistants are in position. It looks like we're just about to get off away here in, uh, in Almineca. Captain George Jeremy lays the ball back. Van Lue will set and they'll look to put the pressure on Kabir early doors. Looks like a young Kabir side here. Maybe they'll try a few of those long balls early uh, to really test the defence and see how they deal with the pressure. Zeus, is he going to go along with this one? It looks like he will. Long ball in. Moya flicks. Cleared away by the Pierce centre back. It's Malman looking to pick up the scraps, but a great run there by the Kobias right back. Putting on the burners down the right hand side. Sends the ball through and well covered by Juan Lu. Early signs there, a bit of danger, Jacob. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit dangerous, um, caught on the counter attack, but really well read by the right back and uh, very nicely cleared up. Absolutely, it's important in this games where we will dominate possession. We expect for large portions of the game to really stay alert uh, in our own defensive third and make sure that no sloppy goals are, are conceded. Another long throw, clear by Juan Lu again as Malaga. I mean, Eka City squeeze up the pitch. Easy mistake made, don't worry. There'll be plenty of those during this game, you know, we're just settling in. Absolutely, we're fortunate enough to have so many amazing teams here <laughs> in Almineca that it's, it's easy to mistake one for another, but the ball's cleared by the Kabir's keeper. Moya gets up well. Anuta will reset. Usu, another new addition to this uh, Almineca squad, squad this season. Uh, been very impressive pre-season. Looking forward to seeing him play today and dictating play from the back. Through ball, great ball, broke the lines. And Vincente goes down. Referee gives nothing now. Could be a safe putting the charge on. Yeah. Do you expect any nerves, Jacob early on from uh, Almineca, or are you expecting them to to be confident from their last outing? I mean. Yeah, you can play as many pre-season games as possible, but there's always going to be nerves the first game of the season. Um, you know, the pressure's on a little bit, and 
I know every single one of these players really cares about getting promotion. So, you know, not only is there pressure from the fans, but also you put pressure on yourself. You know, as a player, you want to you want to play well and you want to help the team progress through the league. So there will be some some nerves, especially from the younger players. But great ball it's always good. From Sergi finds Malman and now Louise me out wide, puts in a great delivery. Cleared away by KBS. Great areas to be finding though. We're really focusing at the moment on breaking lines and looking dangerous early doors. Malman finds Louise me again, a great outlet out wide, great delivery. And he puts it back stick. Is Hugo gonna get there? He does, but unfortunate there. Good signs early on from both teams. Both teams really putting the pressure and looking to take the game to the opposition. It's obvious, Jacob, that Kabias are not happy just to sit in here and take away a, a point or, you know, try and go for a 1-0 victory. They're really looking to take the game to Almineca City. Yeah, it might be a bit early to say this, but we might have a, a really exciting end-to-end -end game here. Wanlu gets up well, flicks on, Chris chases, picks up the second, well dealt with by the centre-back. It's understandable early days, first game of the season, although a lot of rust has got out in the season, in, in pre-season games, sorry. Um, there'll still be nerves, there'll still be, um, you know, a few uh, dodgy touches, let's say. Um, so expect the quality to increase as the game goes on. One thing that you'll see as a, as a focal point of um, the way Almineca City play, Alessandro Briggs definitely sets the tempo from the front line and really looks to hurry the defenders. Um, be interesting to see how they deal with that pressure and if they can, you know, will continue to play out the back as Jeremy plays wide. Jesus puts in a great delivery. Oh, free header back Steve Usu. The centre back finds himself unmarked but goes over the bar with that one. Jacob, great, great quick play there from, um, from Jeremy. Yeah, I was about to say actually, really, really quick thoughts. Um, Great idea from Jeremy to play quickly and brilliant delivery actually from the fullback. Unlucky that the centre back couldn't couldn't finish it off. One of those cases where you wish the strikers on the end of that ball, but nonetheless a great delivery and a great play there for uh, Almineca City. Sergi spreads the play out wide. Louise me again looking to get up the pitch. Something to know, it's a very, very hot day here in Almineca City, so both sides looking to preserve their energy, make sure they keep the tempo high, but still be smart with that. Um, looks like a bit of a sore one there, but there could be a centre-back. Let's just hope that the injury isn't as serious as it seems. Hugo there. I'm not sure that was intentional, just one of those. He stuck a leg out. I think he's caught the defender on the top of the foot. Physio will be on to treat. Jacob, what do you make of the start so far? I think he's been positive, actually. Both sides have looked to play. Both sides have been quite expansive with the way they've played. So, yeah, really positive and encouraging for Almanyeka, especially. Absolutely, Victor Franco there looking to get his message across. Sergi also, this is where you see the experienced players really get hold of the younger younger players in the ranks at uh, Almineca City. So, good start, but a lot to work on, a lot to build on from here. Could be a sort of restart. Looks like the defender's all right. Bit of water on the head and back on. It's the magic sponge, I think. Has to be that old cliche. Yeah. The cold Strap bucket. Play, yeah. All bouncing around. Great through ball there from Hugo. Finds Briggs. Well reset. A look to go wide again. This left hand side looking in a real problem for Kavias early on with Louise me and Charlie Malman. Sergi looking to dictate, dictate play through the middle. Malman driving through midfield. Former youth team player at Paris Saint-Germain, so we'll bring a lot, a lot of experience to this, this side. 
Briggs is caught offside there, but uh, good build-up play there. We're looking to play through the centre. Obviously, options out wide with the full-backs bombing on, so bright start here from Mamineka City. I haven't actually seen much of Briggs, um, but every time I do see him, he's always really positive, making, um, always threatening in behind, and I, I really like that, especially from a really young player. Positive, enthusiastic and energetic. I think looking back at the beginning games, you know, pre-season, that was one area that the coaching staff really identified. We need to add a, add a threat in behind to our game. Um, obviously, we have a lot of technical players within the squad here, uh, but sometimes you have to be able to send those balls into areas to, to keep the defenders guessing. And I think Briggs offers that in abundance in, in his energy uh, and willingness to run in behind. So we're uh, excited to see how that develops as the game goes on. I must say though, Kabir's looking organised here. Um, they definitely come in with a game plan and sticking to that. So it's going to be an interesting uh, encounter. See if I mean, I can see as the game develops, can uh, can really break the side down. Malman picks the ball up. Please, well, he starts from the left hand side. They'll swing the ball across. Van Moyer picking the ball up, looking for that diagonal ball that's not on. Said he picks a great ball out wide to Louise Me. Malman. Challenge in the middle of the park, the ball breaks Cabeza's way. Bit of interchange and they are looking dangerous. I mean, Eke City lads have to have to be switched on here. Um, they don't need a second invitation to get forward and get numbers forward, so um, it's important we stay switched on early, early doors. Jacob, you played this morning. Talk about that heat and how that affected you earlier today and how that's going to affect these boys out on the field today. Well, I mean, as you can probably tell by my face right now, it is red raw. So, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, the, the heat is quite overwhelming so it's definitely going to play an effect in this game and um, yeah I think it's going to be really important for, for the players to keep possession because end-to-end -end stuff as, as we're seeing right now it's going to be very difficult to keep that up for the full 90 minutes. Looks like Jesus the right back for I mean I can see he's got a little bit of a problem here and look to try and shake it off um, but you could say you know stop start uh, game at the moment neither team really getting into the full flow um, but that's understandable. Jake, looking back to obviously the title winning season last year, uh, how key were, were these results where things weren't always pretty, um, results didn't always come easy, um, but in, in the long run, you know, they really do add up and points can be ever so valuable in this league. Yeah, I mean, last year we, we only just won the league by quite literally the skin of our teeth. And I mean, unbelievable efforts from every single player in the squad last year. Um, and I think, honestly, the most, the most important wins and points that we won were those kind of last minute, those last minute winners where you just scrape a draw or you just get those three points. And that's what made the difference between winning the, the league, getting promoted and coming second. Yeah, well, I hope it's a bit more convincing here today for Army. I can see as Vincente breaks down the right hand side. He's got two defenders on him. Unfortunate there. Great recovery work there by Juan Lu. And I think the benches, you know, the size of the squad will really come into play today. Uh, we've mentioned the heat also, obviously, early on in the season, so legs won't be as uh, as prepared as, as they can be going into the second half of the season. So uh, don't, wait. don't be surprised if you see a f few substitutions really change the complex of this game going into the latter parts of, uh, of the game. Always me sets with Usu. There's always Sergi dropping into that deeper role, trying to dictate play from the back line. Finds Malman, one-two in the middle. Great feet there. Finds a through ball. Great play there by Sergi. Louise me finds a ball into the middle and cleared by the Kabir's defender. Great combination play through the middle there. Some real quality. We know Louise me can put in a great delivery, so it'll be interesting to see how Kabir's deal with that moving forward. While we set for this corner, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's tuned in from around the world. Unfortunately, we can't 
uh, read the comments today as we don't have um, the screen available. But I uh, just want to say thank you to all the viewers um, for tuning in. Fandu with the delivery. Goes front post. Great delivery there. Whips the ball front post. Victor Franco really not happy with his players there. And well covered by the keeper. Jake, set play is going to be a, a factor going into this game? So important. Always so important because that can be the difference between, you know, winning and losing, winning and drawing, you know. that Those points make all the difference. Um, and I know last year we, we had some struggles with defensive corners. So not only in possession of the ball, attacking corners and, and set pieces, but also defensively. It's so important to be concentrated because it can be that slight difference between getting points and not. Absolutely. I mean, I can see really starting to find the groove now. Unlucky there by Usu, but, um, you know, popping the ball around well. Good variety of passing, long and short range. Sets again. The ball sets again with Mata. Charlie Malman now dropping deep. You'll see Sergi take up a higher position. Usu looking for a ball over the top to Briggs, who again offers a, an option down that channel. Great touch inside. Oh, very unlucky there, but great play by Briggs. Looking really bright early doors. Reason with a restart, throws the ball in. Well dealt with by the Kabir's defender. Russia will tidy things up at the back. Actually, James, going back to your earlier statement, not being able to see the comments, we also don't have any replays. So uh, that could be quite interesting, um, commentating on this game. Mm -hmm. But we do our best. We've got a great view here. Hopefully we won't miss anything, Jacob. I trust us between the pair of us to pick up every little bit of action. <laughs> so great ball in, great touch. Ruiz me again offering an option. He gets wide. Linesman gives offside. Jake, you've played with Luis Me. Um, tell us what he offers down that, that left hand side. Oh, I have a massive amount of respect for Luis Me. In possession of the ball, he's second to none, to be honest. Really has amazing technique and a fantastic delivery, which I'm sure we'll see um, during the course of this game. And hopefully, he can get himself an assist, maybe even a goal. But we'll see. Usu gets up well. Looks like Charlie now has joined the stream. Welcome, Charlie. We're missing you here and get back soon. Lucas De Paolo also tuned in earlier. Jacob, do you miss LDP in the ranks? <laughs> I've actually, funnily enough, already watched back the game, well, part of the game this morning. And I heard Richard comment about whether people can ask me questions about whether I miss LDP. Of course, <laughs> of course. Every, I think everyone misses LDP. Um, he was a huge character in the je dressing room. And yeah, fantastic player as well. I mean, I think every player that was in the squad last year really brought something to the squad, whether it was on the pitch or you know, a personality in the team and every single player made, made last year special. Um, so yeah, of course we miss LDP. For those of you who don't know, LDP, Lucas De Paula, now playing professionally in Sweden. Uh, just another example of the pathways here through the senior team. And it's great to see some of the academy lads in the squad this year that have made the way and progressed through our academy teams into our U23s and now playing for the senior team um, and that's what this club's about you know it's about opportunity and providing those players with uh, a chance to really showcase their ability at a high level Ooh, Moya takes a chance there but deals with it well in the end you're looking at this team as well you've got Ivan Moya obviously coach of the U23s 
assisted by Charlie Malman, who's playing on the left-hand side. Alvaro Mata, obviously a goalkeeping coach here. George Jeremy, the academy director. People are really invested in this project, not only on the pitch, but also off, off of it. And I think that's one of the reasons it makes it so special. So, um, a long season ahead, but I know it'll mean so much for these guys if they can go all the way and achieve what they set out to achieve this year. Referee's call there causes a bit of controversy. I was about to say that, actually. It seems like the crowd did not agree with the linesman decision of giving offside there. I know you don't think you guys at home will be able to see this, but there is... Uh, quite a number of people in attendance at the game. It's great to see, obviously, after the year we have with COVID, fans now being allowed back in the stadiums and um, hoping that it will really give a boost to the home side today. And it's having the crowd, the it really does make a difference having a crowd, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It brings a different energy. You know, those tired legs, great ball there to Malman. I'll come back to your point there, Jacob, as Malman takes him. 1v1, cuts inside. Slips him through. Jeremy's in. Oh, great save there by the keeper! And it's Hugo Goal! Hugo Vicente! I told him he was going to score today, and he does! Great slip ball there through from Malman. Finds Jeremy, who produces a great save from the goalkeeper and falls in the way of the Frenchman, who slots home from about eight yards. Jacob, great play there, huh? Yeah, phenomenal build-up play, and I mean, I think we could all feel it coming, you know. We've been putting a lot of pressure on, on the Cubiero goalkeeper, and I think, you know, it was bound to happen at some point. Absolutely. Cubiero's there really, um, you know, thought they dealt with it with the keeper making a great save, but uh, Hugo Vincente there gets a big hug from the assistant manager, Victor Franco, his first goal of the season. Uh, an important goal, I think, in the, in the grand scheme of things. You can... You can see the tempo there from uh, Hugo trying to set it in the defensive half. Now he scored the one goal. Receives a yellow card for his efforts. Jacob, they say you're most vulnerable when you've just scored a goal. Talk about how, how important it is that the lads keep the concentration now and um, and don't let one slip before half time. I mean, that statement is understated for sure. I mean, if anyone who watched watched the game this morning. That's exactly what happened. We scored, and I think it was just, I think it was three minutes later we, we conceded just before half time. So, very frustrating to, for that to happen, but it is very true. You're always most vulnerable after scoring. Well, out of play there. It'd be interesting to see how Kobias react to this. Will they sit into the shell or will they go after the game and um, and try and get back into this? As we mentioned, we did see a trend where Almineka really starting to find the groove, find the find the mojo. A little bit risky play there, but Sergi again with a beautiful ball out wide to Louise Mew who's offered an option all day. Cuts inside. Unlucky there. Really good play though. I think as the game progresses, obviously tired legs. Uh, they look to use that wide option really to get down the, the byline and put crosses in the box. We've got the players that can um, can meet them, you know, box to box midfielders. A dangerous ball here though. Looks like a little bit of lapse in communication. Usa will clean up. A little bit sloppy there from the Army Necker boys. As we mentioned, it's really important that they keep their concentration here. Play short to the seven. Seven puts in a low cross, but nobody there for Kabias. I mean, Eka will look to slow things down a little bit now. We near Jeremy. Shouting a little bit more. You know, they want to raise the levels again and really get back um, to the tempo they were at previous to the goal. James Dawes just showing off his incredible Spanish in which he's acquired during his time over here in Spain. Next time, Jacob, we promise the viewers that we'll do... Oh, great interplay there. Unlucky. Great interplay there into Jeremy. Now on the right-hand side, who finds Hugo again looking threatening. I must say, you know, having been at the training all week, you can see that Hugo's found his confidence back. He's 
you know, after speaking with him, I talked to him a little bit about that, and he said the year off with COVID and the lack of games really did play a part, uh, and he feels like he's, he's slowly but surely getting back into the swing of things, which is great to see. But um, Jake, did you find that a factor? Luckily, I was actually here last year for most of the, most of my time during COVID, and. I mean, we were we were blessed with the amount of games. Not, I think, not having a single game cancelled due to COVID reasons. So, I mean, you can't really complain with that, can you? Referee bows up for a free kick again to the disapproval of the crowd. This is real free kick territory here. I know they have a few Brazilians in the ranks at Kabir, so this could be interesting. I'm being told from our producer that didn't look like a foul. Small details are really important at this, and again, it's important that the lads keep the concentration as the ref brings them back 10 yards. Alvaro Mata organising the wall, calls for a fourth man. This is real dangerous territory here for Almineca. 14 lines up, goes low. Great hands there for Mata. Talk about Jacob, how important it is having an experienced man between the sticks. You've got Mata there, who obviously part of the promotion winning team with Malaga City last year. Uh, tell us a little bit about him, you know, on and off the field. I mean, actually, funnily enough, I don't really know him so well off the field. He's, he's a very understated man, actually. Um, quite quiet but on the pitch a presence definitely a presence you know organizers from the back and um great energy there from Sergio. sorry about that um, <laughs> he um yeah organizes from the back and gives a lot of confidence to the to the defenders you can see a few tired legs out there the heat getting to a few of the players i think obviously big pitch here jeremy looking bright though looks again for briggs oh Offers a threat vote in behind and, and to feet there. And we're 25 minutes here in here at uh, Estadio Francisco Burnett. It's 1 0 to see Dalmineca City. Looking for that all important second goal. Like Azus will line up for another long throw. Put the ball in the box. Moya looking front post. Puts on the pressure and gets a corner kick. I know that Almi have been working on set plays this week on the training ground, so it'll be interested to see if we can come up with anything creative here. Great atmosphere, atmosphere building up here inside the stadium. All through by Louise Me. Looks like that was going direct to goal, but great header there from the defender. We both know if he had scored that, he definitely would have claimed it as well. Absolutely. He's got such a wicked delivery. Again, puts it in. Should be keepers. Keeper punches away. Well, Jeremy will follow up. Ooh. Nearly a Steven Gerrard moment there for uh, Jeremy. <laughs> Looked very confident as he ran up to that one, but unfortunately not with the end product. Good pressure here, though. I'm liking what I'm seeing now. The, the guys look like they've picked the tempo right back up and putting it back on Kabias. Wadlow has been absolutely solid in the centre of the park today, winning most aerial balls and jewels. This could be a seven who picks it up. Some good interplay there in the middle of the park. But good steal again from Malman, who looks to break away on the counter. Finds Jeremy, who goes past his man. Can he find that delivery? Oh, Malman again on the rebound. Really unlucky there, but... Great vertical play from Alvinecker City. 
Malmen and Germany linking up there. Of course, they've got a playing history together, having played in, in multiple countries and continents together, so it's great to see those two on the field. Jake, we're going into the, you know, the second half of the first first half, the second bit of the first half, should I say? How important do you think it is to get a second goal before half time and try and kill the game? You know, I've never understood the saying that a two nil lead is the most dangerous lead because I definitely prefer to be two nil up than one nil up. Do you know what I mean? That's a great point. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely, be so nice to go into the second second half with a two nil lead. And, and really allow the players to, to relax and hopefully enjoy the second half and really dominate possession. Absolutely. You, meant about the enjoy you mentioned the enjoyment of the football there. It's been great to see over the last couple of weeks the guys really come together and start enjoying the football. And I think the results are there to be seen, you know. Louise me finds a great ball to Juan Lu. Plays out wide to Jesus, who loves to get forward from that right-hand side. Unlucky there, looks like there was a trip on. Great play by Moya. Looks like there was a trip on Briggs, but the referee gives nothing. Could be us not happy with the, the way the throw was given there. Jeremy goes down, I think he got a clip on the Achilles there. I'm ball, I'm sorry. Show me a little bit of argy bargy there. Don't know what all that was about. We can't afford to get any cards there, but um, cool and collected as always there from George as he walks away. Or maybe not. Yellow card awarded to the captain there. Really not happy with that decision. Again, it's Louise me with a little bit of a wider angle. I would not be surprised to see this one goal goal was Jacob. As the drum beats down. Louise me's having a look. He, I think he fancies this one. If he scores, I know we're going to have a I told you so moment, aren't we? Something just senses me. There's a good delivery coming here. The crowd builds in anticipation. Louise puts the ball in the box. Oh, but it's to no avail. The keeper gathers well. Actually, giving his dues, very well taken by the goalkeeper. Well. Oh, Moya gets up well. So what have you made of this first half, Jacob? I think, actually, Almanyaka looked very comfortable. Um, the opposition have come here with a very, very clear game plan, as you can see here. A very, very clear 4-1-4-1 in defence formation. And I mean, you know, they seem to be executing it well, but Almanyeka seemed to just have that extra little bit of a bit of quality, you know, a bit of class, and are looking very comfortable in this current time. Great analysis there from Jacob Thompson. Why, thank you. Louise, we're really offering a little bit of pace on that back line. I think that's frightening there. Could be a spot line that could be something that uh, we look to exploit a little bit more. As I said, the score's still 1 0, though, and it's anybody's game. With a large portion of the game still to play. Link up. I mean, Necker not happy with that decision. It was Malman that was in the offside position, but. Ball is offside. See a little bit of frustration creeping in from Kabias. I think the linesman would argue that Marmon was maybe active in active that Active being the key word. Yeah, uh, active being the key word, yeah. Absolutely. Man, 
actually really interesting dynamic between Molman as the winger and Luis Me as the fullback. Molman dropping in and almost playing as like a, a central, a wide central midfielder, allowing Luis Me the width of the pitch to to kind of you know attack and be as creative as he can. Yeah, really, really interesting. Very good point there, and uh, a little bit of the philosophy. At of the club, you know, Malaga City and Amineke City, the, the fullbacks are playing a massive part in getting forward and adding some real firepower to that forward line. So, um, Luis Me will be happy to do that all day. He looks for it again, cleared away by the defender, Korea's defender. Usha will go to meet this one. Game again, getting a little bit stop start. Beautiful day here in uh, in the south of Spain. Great day for football. The pitch will be interesting because it's it's not been the greatest in pre-season by our own admission. We are working to, to improve it every day. Uh, but it looks like it's holding up well so far. Sprinkle before the game and still looking to have a little bit more to give. Three Aminaka players closed down, picked up by Azus. Wins are throwing great pressure there. Zeus goes long, looking to unlock Briggs. Put out by the Cavias defender. Yeah, I was going to say the pitch does look to be in quite good condition. I know it hasn't been great in the past, but like seems to be in really good condition. And, and the ball doesn't seem to skip too much when it's being passed. So, you know, not too many problems. Absolutely, Sergi again dictating play, putting the ball side to side. Malman cutting in like he has done so many times this first half and finds yeah. Louise Me. Louise Me puts in a great ball. Absolute Mr. Whippy there from the wide position. Is that a 99p Mr. Whippy, that one? Yeah, no, Louise has got great technique. We're all aware of that. Sergi, man on his back, but plays well there with Hugo. Finds Sanjo Briggs down the side. Just ushered out there. Well played by the Kibius defender. Ooh, linesman didn't look sure on that decision. Bit of a hesitation, but I think he made the right decision. Very well done by the defender. Great to have football back here in Almineca as well. I know we played on this this pitch uh, a few times last year, but uh, this will be the home of, of Almineca City for the season. And um, with it, you know, we bring in the community, which has plays a vital part in this club and has done for a number of years. So great to have football back in Almineca. Great to have the fans back as well. I know there's been a lot of lifelong fans of the club um, before before it was actually FC uh, CD Almineca City, sorry, um, and it was just. Um, the Almanyeka team so really really nice for those lifelong fans to be able to be back in the stadium and supporting the club that they've grown up with absolutely and if you're a new fan if you're just tuning in for, for the first time Briggs turns well and looks to unlock as I was saying you know if you're a new fan, fan of Almanyeka City make sure you're following us on all our social media platforms that's where all the information gets put on upcoming games and streams so you can follow us just like this one um, like we said, it's going to be a long season. We're going to need as many people as we can along the way to get our, to get us through. You would not guess that this is his first time commentating. <laughs> so professional, seamless plug right there. Absolutely seamless. I think uh, I think the partnership really really works well, Jacob. Hugo again down that side. I wouldn't say he's been as involved as Luigi on the right. Oh, he, he could have gone down there. Shields, very honest play there by the Frenchman. Chooses to stay on his feet, but. On any given day, could have gone down there and the referee would have surely had no choice but to award a penalty. Plenty of players that would have chosen not to be as honest there, for sure. Really important phase of the game now as we enter the last 10 minutes of the first half. All Almineca at the moment, with Alvaro Max having relatively little to do. Great ball delivery. Also seemed to turn his back on that one. Very interesting, but... Maybe he thought the referee had awarded a foul or... But there he's back to clean things up. Always calm and flick to do so in possession. Louise me switches sides, goes right, flick flat. Wins another corner. I wouldn't like to guess how many corners we've had this first half, but Jacob, one of these has surely got to turn in eventually. I mean, you would hope so, wouldn't you? So far, the deliveries have been good. We just... To be honest, the goalkeeper's done really well. The goalkeeper has done really well collecting these. Oh, we go short here. 
go short with this one. Louise been looking for a better angle. Not the delivery that we've been used to, but you know, we'll again, this one. we'll let him off this one time, you know. Absolutely. A little bit of miscommunication there between Jesus and Juanlu, but Juanlu, as he's done all day, cleans up. Absolute mop at the back there. Reese chases the ball down in the midfield and wins a flick. Great work there by the, the forward man. Sergio turns into trouble but gets away with that one. Finds him again in the midfield. Great ball out wide. Juanlu, great touch. Oh, what a ball. He finds Hugo. Can he cut inside? He needs support. Cuts inside. Finds Charlie Malman, he's Frenchman. Oh, Charlie there looking for a penalty. It looked like he made really good contact with that ball, but nothing given by the referee. There's been some real highlights this first half, Jake, and some really good interplay between the Almineca lads and finding space out wide to then deliver. Having not seen many of the Almineca games, I'm actually very impressed by the interplay. Some moves have been really, really nice to see and very, very promising. And also to re rewind back to your point earlier about um, Hualu when he um, recovered that ball. Oh. I mean, need us comment about the foul? Listen, I'm not too sure from this angle. Hopefully my producer will tell me if it wasn't the 50-50 I'm being told. But again, another dangerous area for Kabias. Mm -hmm. See if they can get some end product on this one. Just to reiterate what I was saying about uh, Hualu recovery. I think that's a great sign of a good team, you know. You see, you see players making mistakes, which they always do. Players always make mistakes. But the fact that, you know, you see his, his recovery, and not only players recovering for their own mistakes, but their teammates recovering and winning the ball back, you know, yeah. and really cleaning up those mistakes. It's it, a great it, really, it really reflects the team before self attitude here uh, at the club, and that's what the management, you know, George, George Jeremy and Victor Franco obviously worked on. Uh, and what's great to see here for me is um, obviously the pieces have been there in pre season, but we haven't been able to knit it all together. Whereas now um, you're really starting to see that come to the forefront of the game. And what a strike! I don't believe what I've just seen. I mean, I do not believe what I've just seen, Jacob Thompson. I mean, James Dawes. Speechless. Deserved celebrations there from Kabias as he hits an absolute rocket from what could only be what? 40 plus yards? I mean, I'd have to get the tape measure out, but wow. That one definitely <laughs> deserves a replay here. Great. I think you can see pretty much every person in the crowd take their phone out to have a look at the replay there because that was absolutely. Even the Almineca astonishing. City fans applauding there. There's hands on heads, there's a bit of disbelief. That's come out of absolutely nowhere. What a goal. Disbelief is probably the word. It really is. That's what 1-0 uh, does though. It means that Kibiasa back in the game. We're back all square here. A lot to do for uh, Almineca and we'll see how they push on from here. Do we, will we get a reaction, Jacob Thompson? Yeah, I'm sure we will. And I mean, sometimes you really do just have to hold your hands up and say, wow, because wow. that was astonishing. It really was. Nice there by Malman. Primera Andaluza has got some talent, I'll tell you that right there. Absolutely, great pronunciation there from Jacob as well, I must say. Gracias. That is what they say in Spain, is known as a golazo. <laughs> Un golazo. Un golazo, que golazo. Amineke looking to re-establish possession on the ball, but Kabir seemed to be, to be fired up after that screamer. Hugo does really well to win a throw in there, by the way. Under a lot of pressure, he's done really well. Oh, Briggs gets absolutely clattered there. Let's see if we can replicate that. And the yellow card issued by the referee. Right decision there, I think, Jake. will be looking dangerous going for the one-two there, Briggs. Yeah, definitely the right decision. I mean, there was intent to go for the ball, but quite frankly, he didn't make any contact. Absolutely. 
absolutely. And um, it'll be interesting to see who takes this one. There's some there's some fantastic free kick takers around the ball at the minute. You've obviously got Louise Mew's favourite with that wand of a left foot. Some call him Harry Potter. They really don't. I've they just really made that up on the they spot. They really don't. They but really anyway, don't. I like the analogy. Thank you. John Beats here. I remember watching Louise Mew knock one top corner from exactly the same range as this last season. He has 100% got this in his locker. It does look like it's going to be Louise Mew, the way he's standing over the ball. Takes his trademark four steps back. That is a tall Kabeus wall. Ooh, and draws a fantastic save there from the keeper. But as we said, quality in that left foot from Louise Mew is undoubted they could really do with one before half time here Jacob yeah for sure and definitely a fan favourite at this point Louise Mia absolutely I think. a yeah. local boy Kim and Juan Lu from Almineca I believe and have grown up in these parts it means a lot to them to represent the boy of club great delivery again Briggs rises but to no avail Louise Mia clearing up well back to Juan Lu who delivers a, a great ball in the box Looking for Moya back stick. Keeper's done well. Keeper has done well. Ignore my ignorance, but Hualu and Luis Mi are brothers, right? They're not brothers, no. They're very, very, very good friends, but not brothers. They're not brothers. I, I literally... FAQ here at the club. They are pretty much glued at the hip. Are they not? All I know is that they're fantastic assets to this, to this team. Well done, James. Back to the football. Back Sorry. to the football. Great question. <laughs> We're into the last minute of normal time here at the Francisco Vanet Stadium. We're at 1-1. If I had to guess, I would say two, two, to two minutes added time, Jacob. I think that's a fair assumption. I mean, yeah, it would be. But um, Spanish referees aren't famous for playing the, the added correct time. added time. So, correct. you know... Just to recap on what has been an entertaining first half, we've had Almineca City really driving the majority of possession, dictating play with some nice, nice interplay down either side. Hugo Vincente and obviously Luis Mi looking very, very dangerous. Um, Jacob, what can we expect in the second half if things stay this way? I think more of the same, um, but naturally things will start to open up a little bit more in the second half. As people get tired and substitutions are made, things will, will begin to open up and hopefully... And Munyaka can take advantage of that. Absolutely. We mentioned the importance of either bench. Uh, there could really be some game win winners on there, so stay tuned to see, obviously, the second half and, and what comes to fruition. Can I also say this linesman has absolutely no friends in the crowd right now? Great ball down. Puts it into Rose Ed, literally the last row of, of the stadium there. <laughs> Literally Rose Ed. Literally. Literally Rose Ed. Can't be long left here. We'll see if Armineka can conjure something up. Jeremy plays the twos with, with Louise Me. Great feet again. Referee blows for a foul. Kabias defender goes to his knees. Something tells me he doesn't agree. Great chance here for Almineka, which we, we presume will be the last kick of the game. We see Yusu and Moya going up. Let's we'll see if they can grab something late on in this first half. This really would be an ideal time to score, going into half time, making it 2 1, and settling down for the second half. I like to guess Moya's going on mark back post. Watch out for number four for Almineka here. Makes his way to the front post. Gets up, clears. Not quite the golasso that we saw from Kobias just 10 minutes ago. Palu definitely saw the last goal and thought, you know. Absolutely. I a little bit of inspiration there. But exactly. He fancied a bit of that. You're always told from, from set plays like that to finish the play, prevent the risk of a counter-attack. So smart play there from, from Juan Lu in the middle of the park. Great touch there by Kobias. Number seven. Number seven's impressed me for Kabias today, Jake. Is there anybody else that you've seen that looks a danger for their team? Honestly, no one in particular. But I think as a collective, they've been really, really organised. Really organised. And I've, I've been impressed. I really have. It's definitely not been an easy out in here for our Army Neca City team. Kabias, like you say, really organised and, and determined to get something from this game. 
Wanda makes it through the middle of the park. Jeremy looking to get on the end of it, but cleared well. Yeah, I have kind of just been focusing on the Almanyaka players. I mean, That's fair a commentator shouldn't be biased, but something tells me not many of the Spanish fans are going to be listening. Ball out wide by Usu. Carries his run on from the back. Real oh. bobble there on the pitch. Jeremy picks the ball up. Plays Sergi. Sergi will go left to Juan, uh, to uh, Malman. Flick flack. Maybe not. Finds him. Ooh. Oh, unlucky. Oh, and now we've got a problem. It's 2v1 at the back. They seem to really be stopping there. I'm not sure what's going on. Dangerous attack. He plays him through. 14. Stopped there by Mata. I'm not sure if you're able to see on your screen, but really, really good recovery runs from all the Almanyaka players. And it's 1-1 here at half-time. Will join us for the second half, which I'm sure will be as entertaining as the first. Yeah, so, so we're in the UK, um, my first ever trip over to, to England and um, you know, I think it's been, been a success to be honest. Um, you know, we're finishing up now our, our, our four day um, experience with a tour around Carroll Road. We brought the boys down here last night, um, they got to see a live Premier League game against Manchester United and then um, we're now getting to see the stadium where um, the Manchester United players and Norwich players were playing last night, so you know, unbelievable experience. Yeah, I think, you know, it's gone as, as well as it could have, you know, we have to review it now and I mean, you can always do do better, um, but for a first hit out, you know, I think we've done um, a sterling effort and I can't thank the staff enough, you know, from um, from the media guys to, to Juan Carlos, um, Ryan, you know, has been an absolute loot trooper, you know, I think everyone's really dug in and it shows kind of what this project's about, that it's, it's not just the glitz and glamour, but we've got people that are really here for the cause and just to do the best for the players. The best thing probably about the academy is just being able to meet different footballers from around the world and play against the big teams that you wouldn't get to in Australia. The coaches here are absolutely amazing. They help me in everything, uh, teach me the movements, the run, the passes, what to do and what not to do. And to be honest, I've become such a better player since I've arrived. If I had to describe football in one word, I would choose magical. It's just a sport that I couldn't describe how, how much it means to me and it, everything revolves around it. And it's just all I have, and it's all I'm gonna have, and it's all I want to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> I would say life, because I feel like my life moves around football, and it's just, I'm always watching football, I'm always playing football, and I just always have it on my mind. Probably a dream, you know. God's given me the ability to play, so I'm enjoying it. Um, I have to keep working hard training, and I'll see where it takes me. I play football because I love it, I just like playing. I love the, the game, especially Spanish football. Ah, oh, for me, is like, is my life. This is my life. I think I have talent, but like I say, it's not enough for all players. Even if you have talent, you have to work next to training and do everything you can. 
to be at the top level. Basically just, um, if you want to make it, just go for it. Train hard, work hard, and don't give up. Uh, be able to adapt and change to things. Soccer is a very subjective sport and it's all about the coach's mind and what they're trying to play, but it's really been a fantastic experience for me and I would recommend you come try it out yourself. style of play is we're very attacking. I love it. I love watching everybody go forward. We really like possess the ball and find the perfect opportunities to attack and really break down their defense. It just lets us open up the field and create opportunities that are fun for the players and fun for the coaches. Make sure everything that you guys are doing is a positive thing. You don't get on each other. You don't get on your teammates that you don't know. Your body language is huge. Boarding here at the house we have, it's, it's been extremely fun. It's really helped me to grow as a person being in this new environment. Everybody here loves soccer. Everybody loves to play, watch the game as well. From there, it helps you ease into the school environment because now you're around like-minded people. I'm with these guys day in, day out, the same 30 kids I see every day. So we really, we're like a family out there. We're brothers on the field, brothers in the classroom. So I can come up to any of these guys, ask them for help, and they'll help me immediately. There's no hesitation. Like, we're all really connected here, which is awesome. We're all brothers. Here at the academy, I like how you can go at your own pace for the education. Compared to public schools, you just go at the pace that the teacher sets, even if it isn't the right pace for you. But here, I can go at the pace that's perfect for myself. Being at Malaga really shapes my life's actions, and that's something I wouldn't learn anywhere else, and I'm really gonna be in good shape for the rest of my life. We're going to go to Europe and get experience against the best players on the planet, which are European players, and <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm psyched for it, and the education in Spain is going to be great as well. We're going to be taking a Spanish culture class and also the Spanish language. This program is awesome. It is what any soccer player could possibly dream of in this country, and more people should be able to enjoy this experience that we have. I repeat, I don't want to annoy you. If you feel something, tell us, please. On the second day, I don't want people out. Like... Look at our three people. Oh, no. 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 Oh, no.
And we are back. James Dawes and Jacob Thompson here in the commentary box for the second half of CD Almineca City versus Cobias Bay. Jacob, on reflection, you've had time to digest that first half. What are your thoughts? Yeah, all positive, to be honest. I think the team played really well. It's a very, very clear plan set out by the coaching staff. And so far, they seem to be, you know, executing it brilliantly. Apart from that, let's say, unbelievable strike from the Cobias. Kubias? Kubias, correct. Thank you very much. Kubias. I know I, sp I know I pronounced that wrong in the first half. Kubias player. Unbelievable strike. So apart from that, I don't think they have any worries. No, it's definitely there to be one second half, and you're absolutely right. That, that strike from pff, the best part of 40 yards was the highlight of that first half. But a lot of quality being shown, especially from the uh, Almineca ranks as the ref blows the whistle to, to signal Kubias out of the dressing room. Um, we want to give a big shout out. We know we've got viewers tuning in from around the world, but uh, one in particular, a good friend of mine, Diego Sanchez, who's tuning in from New York. Uh, Diego, thank you for your support. We miss you, buddy, and we hope to have you here soon. But um, if you are watching, we do have the ability to read the, the comments now in the comment section. So drop us a comment to tell us where you are uh, watching from, and we'll happily give you a shout out as, as the second half begins. And here comes the referees, shortly followed by Kabias. Also, I think we should give a shout out to the phenomenal performance we've just witnessed at halftime. Absolutely, we've got halftime show here. We've got fans in in the stadium watching. It's it's great to be back and uh, a real party atmosphere here. Obviously, a celebration to get the season underway. Um, and like we said, it's it's great to have football back here in Almineca, a real real football community. Um, and it just feels just feels right. It just feels like it's back home, Jacob. It just feels right. It does, doesn't it? Really, I'm excited for this second half, though. Uh, as we've mentioned, I do believe it's there for the Almineca boys if, th if they want to take the game to Kabias. But again, they have to be um, sharp in, in the defence uh, on the other side of the ball and really stay attentive. Um, as we've seen bits of quality there from Kabias that, that could threaten the back line of, of Almineca City. Looks like a similar lineup then, Jacob. We're starting, obviously, Alvaro Mata in the, in the net. Luis Mi at left back, Usu and Ivan Moya. Solid partnership there at centre back first half. Uh, Jesus right back caused problems getting up and down that field. Uh, really impressed with the centre midfield duo there of Wanlu and Sergio looking really calm and collective on the ball and obviously a lot of intensity off it, Jacob. Anything to add on that? For sure, definitely. It looks like the only change is actually Molman playing as a 10. And now Jeremy's actually moved on to the left-hand side. Something tells me we're going to be looking to put more deliveries in the box there. Jeremy, obviously, with a fantastic delivery. And, and Charlie naturally likes to, uh, to drift inside. So interesting to see that change. I'm well picked up there. We've got three of the Almunica guys also warming up on the side of the pitch as the second half gets underway. And we're off. Yes, there, starting with a keeper. Really impressed with him first half. He made a good save, obviously, that led to the goal. But uh, other than that, looked sharp, come and collected a lot of uh, decent deliveries that Louise has put in from set plays. So, um, 
Yeah, I was going to say exactly that. Looks really confident coming out and uh, collecting high balls. Hugo there was a threat all first half. Looks to play back inside to Jesus. Looks to switch the field of play, but cut out by the Kavius right back. Great play there by the uh, by the number seven who identified first half. Definitely has something, you know, uh, a bit of quality there and uh, protecting the ball there well. Louise me giving away the foul. It's funny that you're good at um, spotting players. Isn't aren't you a, a recruiter by any chance, James? I absolutely am, Jacob. As you know, most of the people involved with the club hold more than one hat at the uh, within the, within the club and within the organisation. So um, yeah, delighted to help in any way I can, and uh, just enjoying being here with you in the commentary box today. It's a pleasure. Actually, it's my pleasure, James. It's my pleasure. As you know from this stream, we always try to bring you the best coverage. So shout out to the production team here. We've got um, fantastic coverage of today's game. Uh, we'll do our best to comment on top of that and, and add to what we're already providing you guys with. And Jacob, look who it is. We've got Lucas De Paula in the comments section. Lucas De Paula, great to hear from you. Uh, we gave you a little shout out earlier, but definitely deserving of another one. Jacob, anything you want to say to Lucas? Great to hear from you, and also, um, oh, we've got we've got a Portuguese comment. I'm sorry, my Portuguese is a bit rusty. I can't lie, so um, can't really read that. But phenomenal to hear from you, Lucas, and uh, I hope things are going really, really well in Sweden. Guys, if you are watching at home and you want to drop us a comment, please do in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Click there. Ivan Moyer look to reset. It's definitely cooled off a bit uh, slightly for this second half. The sun's slowly starting to go down. I'm, I'm hoping that'll be matched by uh, an up in intensity from the players who obviously, and a slice there from Louise, he nearly comes off. Looks at the pitch in dis disgust. You know what, if you hadn't said it was a slice, he actually could have got away with it. <laughs> yeah. The famous look at the turf after just to show that it wasn't him. Good interplay there. Oh. Briggs back on the back line, but smartly cleared up by the keeper who finds seven. And Kabir starting to put a few passes together, but well cleared by Usu. It's making for a very interesting second half, Jacob. Very interesting. With the score being still 1-1, one, one, I mean, it is. it truly is anyone's game. But obviously... Being being from the Almunyaka side, we do we do hope that Almunyaka can score another goal and, and clinch the three points. Well played by Malman. Briggs finds him on the return. Malman's been very, very good all day. And Briggs is running in behind. Has he got in front of the defender? He has. He looked to finish a goal. Alessandro Briggs, the youngster. Show great pace there to get in front of the defender. Slots it home coolly, but Jacob, a lot of credit there due to Charlie Malman on the through ball. I mean, every time Charlie gets on the ball, you, like something's going to happen. The guy has creativity coming out of his socks, literally coming out of his socks. So, I mean, literally, literally just Alessandro Briggs does so well to, to notice that and make a really, really good run. And also does very well to stay on his feet because I know for a second there he thought about going down. Does Absolutely. really well to stay on his feet Absolutely. and what a finish. Show great composure there in front of the goal. We've said that the Kabeus goalkeeper has been very good all day, but a smart finish there from the youngster. Uh, and again, you know, you're looking there, age and experience combining with youth and um, an inspiration, let's say. Youth, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm en is the word I was looking for. Jacob. Energy. You had so many words to choose from, James. I'll look to do better for next time. <laughs> A great start, yeah. That's exactly what the Amineka City team needed there, re-establishing the lead. Um, but let's hope we can get another one. We, di we didn't do that last time, and obviously they made us pay with a fantastic strike. So it'll be interesting to see now how the both teams react. A little scramble in the box, but cleared up by Alvaro Mata.
Alessandro is just another example, Jacob, similar to yourself. He was in and amongst the um, the academy ranks last year, uh, was patient, spent time with the U19s in particular. I remember him scoring at La Masia against Barcelona and uh, found himself quickly in the U23 setup. And there he's progressed, obviously, now with our senior teams and a bright future ahead of him. Uh, but Jacob, as, as a former academy graduate himself that's worked his way through a similar path, what do you want to say about the progression routes here at the club? I mean, there are a lot of academies out there and I've, I've played for a few myself. And a lot of them promise pathways and they promise development, but I can firsthand vouch for the pathway that there is here at FC Malaga City. And it works. I mean, it truly does work. LDP came on the came on the stream earlier. Another player who's who's played here with the senior team last year and moved on to getting his uh, first professional contract in Sweden. So I mean, there's plenty of examples and testimonies to to what a fantastic club this is. Absolutely, and there's a number of players on the bench that followed a similar pathway. So excited to hopefully see a few of those guys feature today. Yeah, and if you're interested, if you're watching this stream and you're obviously interested in becoming a part of this family, then uh, there is opportunities. We're constantly looking for top unsigned talents from around the world. So if this project appeals to you and it's something you'd like more information on, then we want to hear from you. So if you go to our website at www.fcmalagacity.com and through there you'll find all the information you need in regarding our academy teams, our U23 sides. Um, obviously, everybody comes in with a, with a goal of reaching... Um, one of our senior teams here and the ladder's there for all to see. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, and yeah. Charlie Malman really enjoying himself today. I think you mentioned it, Jacob, obviously the importance of enjoying your football while you're here. And this Aminekas I team certainly looks like they're doing that at the moment. Some great interplay. Obviously, still a few things to work on, which I'm sure they'll be the first to admit. But uh, some really positive signs here on the first day of the season. Yeah, he really is establishing himself as a pivotal player in this team. And, I mean, every time I see Charlie play, he just seems to be enjoying himself. You know, all the time, he's creating things, he's having fun with the ball, and he's just, you know, like I said earlier, the creativity is just, it's a delight to watch, it really is. Dangerous looking ball there, but signal out. Just I mentioned it earlier, but the depth and experience there from the likes of Charlie, obviously being at the youth ranks at PSG, the likes of Matuidi and a number of you know highly talented players that have gone on to represent the country at international level, uh, then on to play professionally in Brazil and, and multiple other places around the world. For young players like Alessandro Briggs and, and other players, you know, even some of the senior players, to play with a player of that quality and experience is really invaluable. Um, and what a ball there by Sergi, another high-level player that's played... Um, very well here in Spain. Great ball there from Juan Lu. Juan Lu for me has been uh, such a consistent figure pre-season and now obviously starting the season off well. He always gives his all and um, his, his quality has been there to show today with a good passing range. A lot of the time Juan Lu goes, he kind of goes unseen in the games, you know. He really does and like you said, he's so consistent at what he does. Just cleaning things up. You know, being a great person in, in the build-up play. And here we've got Alvaro Bueno, new signing for CD Almineca City, entering the field, replacing Hugo Vicente, obviously the first goal scorer of the game. Very impressive from Hugo. Uh, Jacob, what did you make of his performance? Um, let's go with electric, James. Let's electric. With electric, great, great adjective. Thank you. Alvaro here, really a new signing as we've mentioned and uh, experienced at this level will look to add some firepower to the, to the Army the City forward line. Well, I'm not sure about that one. The crowd's really not happy. And Jacob, do you just want to comment for the people at home that can't see on the atmosphere here at the stadium today at Francis Bogonet? I mean, James, what would you say? 200? 300 people? I would say it's the start. There's definitely over 200, and now I wouldn't be surprised if we're looking at even more than that. It's great to see such a good turnout for the first game of the season. Yeah. I would agree. Probably closer to 300 now. And I mean, I'm not sure if you can hear the drum, but yeah, the atmosphere, it, atmosphere here is phenomenal. It really is. And I wouldn't be surprised, Jacob, if that's what gave the team the extra lift there, obviously. Uh, 
getting the uh, Almanac team back into the lead, and that looks dangerously like it's going towards goal. Matter spills, but then recovers well. Great pick up there for the keeper, plays wide to the lead. Great one touch football there. Great play there by Jones. Not sure he got the ball there first, the Kabeus defender. Referee pulls out the yellow card. Jacob, correct decision? Yeah, definitely the correct decision. I mean, it looked as if the defender didn't get much of the ball. And I think the decision may have been spurred on slightly by the reaction of... I don't know if you've just seen that, James, but the, the player has just been given a red card. I think, I'm, I think the yellow... I think the yellow may have been for the tackle and possibly the red for a descent, I'm not sure. And I think you're correct, Jacob. We're not really sure what's been said or what's gone on there, but the Kavias defender has now been sent off for what looks like descent. As he walks down the tunnel, shirt over his shoulder, he's really, really not happy there, but the referee deemed it to be descent and, and warranting the second yellow card which now means the Kabeas team is down to 10 men. Jacob, they've got to take advantage of this now City, no? Yeah, they must do. But I mean, as a, if we have our neutral hats on, yeah. as a neutral, you don't, re you don't really want to see that. You never you know? want to see that. You never yeah. want to see a player getting sent off, especially for something as you know, menial as dissent. Do you know what I mean? So Absolutely. yeah, tough, tough for the opposition to come back from this. But, um, Obviously, we respect all the officials here in the game, and it's important that everyone does demonstrate that as well. But the referee deemed it necessary there to send the Kabeas men off, and um, now they are down to, to 10 men. A very tough ask for them to come back against this strong city side. Jeremy puts the ball in, Drew drives it in. Ooh! Usu there on the end of it. What looked like a great delivery, and very nearly ended with a goal. Jacob, let's talk about the combination play today because, again, that, that red card decision was a, was a result of combination play down the left-hand side, which then led to, a, uh, to an over-the-top run by Alvaro there. Uh, it's been the key to, to Alineca City's success all day. I mean, yeah, wow. What can I say about it? I think I said something about it in the first half, and it, it's been, it really has been impressive. Really, really impressive. And as you can see now, we're going to see another taste of... Ooh, Maybe not. I thought we were going to see another taste of, of some very nice interplay, but well played by Alessandro Briggs to play the ball out for the, for the number five who's just gone down. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, while we do have a, a short break, Lucas De Paolo with a question. Giuliano is injured at the moment and is not in the squad for today. He's with us in the stand, so I uh, hope oh, that clears that one up um, for you, Luca. Jacob, expecting to see some subs soon? I mean, we're coming up to 60 minutes in the game, and yeah, I think maybe the, between the 60 and 70 mark is when you're usually going to see some, some more subs. I know we've had one so far. Maybe one or two more, just to, just to add a little bit more energy to the team. But, I mean, as we can see now, no one seems to be struggling. No one seems to be struggling. They all uh. seem to be very energetic, and the enthusiasm has definitely not dropped. Great work there by Jeremy, who shuts the ball down. Charlie looking to install that great footwork that he has again. Plays back to Louise Me. Looks to play back, and they'll recycle. What a ball. Playing out from the side. It's been a joy to watch some of this football today, Jacob. It really has. I know we are affiliated with the club, but it really does deserve its justification and uh, or its credit, should I say. And again, a bulldozing run through. Briggs with the feet. Oh, and slides over the bar. Great to see the boys really enjoying themselves now. Fantastic feat from Alessandro there. And also, can we talk about how Louise Me played out of pressure there? That was delightful to watch. It really was. Absolutely. And what you'll find is that Sidi Amineka City all pre-season have played against higher level opposition, whether that be Tessera or Division D or North Clubs, um, which is tough, you know. Uh, obviously, the energy levels and the pressure and the intelligence of the opposition players is a lot higher, but... Um, they're really showing that it's done them well in the long run. Um, the boys look fit, they look strong, and most importantly, they all know their roles and have been very, very dangerous today in attack. So, um, great to see there. Yeah, it, it can be it can be frustrating play against 
higher category opposition. But right now, we're seeing the rewards that it, that you can reap from it. You know, absolutely. Right now, they everyone on the pitch looks comfortable, playing really, really nice football, and hopefully, fingers crossed, on the way to very, very nice first three points. Yeah, still a lot, lot to play. Yeah, the score's still only two one, so it's anybody's game at this point. But we are the the team and the ascendants at the moment. The defender yet again goes down. I'm not sure what's gone on there, but um, maybe looking to to even the scores there. It's James, am I right in saying that is the same player that went down in the first half? It could possibly be, I Jacob. I'm not too sure, be. but... Um, He's definitely been in the wars today, that's for sure. Potentially see on the, on the replay there if anything went on, but... Um, Something tells me he'll be okay. Another here sub lining up there. And here comes the physio on with the, the magic sponge again. The magic sponge. Can't go understated, as Jacob said first half. The magic sponge does wonders. Big starts quickly. And a corner ball here. There's another sub lines up for Aminaka City. We'll see the introduction of Leia very, very soon. It'd be unfortunate for the person coming off from here because each player to their own have been very, very good today. But uh, it is a long season uh, and you know you need a squad to uh, to win this league so it's important that we rotate and provide minutes to all our players great delivery again from louise me could be as clear as jamie lines up again for the stephen gerrard but unfortunately nothing to come of that one on the unfavored right foot as well you'd love to if see i it, say Jacob. that you'd love to see it i would you know what if that had finished in the top corner the scenes would have been sublime and it's really sad to see here. Uh, hopefully it's nothing serious, but Charlie Malman, who's been one of the standouts today, goes down. Looks like he'll be coming off and replaced by, by Leia, who's warming up. Never good to see a, a player hobbling off like that, but hopefully he'll be back soon and uh, producing a bit of magic again. Stand innovation here from the crowd who claps Malman off. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, a round of applause here for the work that he's put in today as he salutes the crowd. And a fan favourite here, he's been with the club for a number of years and a great servant on and off the field to uh, Almineca City. Big hug there from Victor Franco. I'll ask you a question, James. Hit Sum me. up Charlie's performance today in one word. I'm going to go with pristine, Jacob. Pristine. Pristine, and I'll tell you why, because Charlie, we all know, you know, um, has quality in abundance. Um, but when he puts it all together like today, you can really see why he's played at that next level. And you know, it's great to see him coming off with a big smile on his face. He's enjoying his football at the moment. I know it was a tough year last year for him with, with injury and uh, a few setbacks along the way, but it looks like he's really back to his best. And it's great to see from, uh, you know, from, a, from a friend and a colleague's perspective, player there with a great touch. Great answer, by the way. Really nice answer. Thank you. The guys I feel for today, the defenders, um, it's unfortunate they're not going to come away with a clean sheet today. Uh, I know the they, you know, defender, you always want to have a clean sheet and um, and nothing but a wonder strike was in the way of that today as they break through. Oh, great strength there. Oh, great set. Oh, Jamie follows up. Oh, cleared off the line again. Inspired defending. As I was just saying there, that the Malaga City as a unit today have been very, very good and organised defensively, and it's unfortunate that we won't come away with the clean sheet today, but that what's really impressing me, Jacob, is the attacking flair. Yeah, for sure. It has been delightful to watch. It really has. Honestly, going back to the, what you said about the defenders, it's, it's these games where you have to be so concentrated. Obviously, when so, when so much of the game is played in possession of the ball, attacking, you really have to be, you can't, especially as a fullback, talking as a fullback, because I am one. Okay. 
when you're driving forward, as you can see, beautifully done by Luis Me until he lost the ball. Um, <laughs> he, it's very, very difficult to be disciplined in possession when you have so much possession, you know. So today is one of those days where you really have to concentrate. I would remind our viewers it is only 2-1 on the scoreline, so there's still a lot of time to play here, and it only takes one free kick, uh, one set play, one wonder strike like we saw the first half, and Kabirs are back in this game. So really, really important that um, we keep our eye on the prize here and don't switch off. Exactly. With 25 minutes left, like anything can happen. Anything can happen. We want to hear from you, though, guys. If you are tuning in, um, let us know where you're watching the game from, from around the world. We love seeing our viewers and uh, the different countries and continents. Great run there by Alvaro. Oh, what a finish. Great run there. Go! Slightly delayed, but I would say that was the best goal we've had so far. And that's exactly what City needed, Jacob. That is exactly what City needed. Great through ball there. Great run and great finish, and the place goes crazy. Shout out to Richard Jackson, by the way, because he makes these goals look effortless. And I must admit, I don't sure I have the lung capacity to go for one more. So let's hope that that doesn't uh, that they don't test me too much. Real feel-good feeling around the stadium today, Jacob, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. It's really nice to see senior players from both clubs, under-23 players from both clubs, all coming together to support one team, you know? And I know we, we had a similar support this morning for the Malaga game, so it's really, really nice to see the Malaga senior players coming to support the Almanyeka senior players and vice versa. So really, really lovely to see. Yeah, great point there. And... Uh if you don't know already, we are, you know, one club, Malaga City and CD Almineka, one family. So if you missed the game today, go onto our YouTube channel and check that out. Um, it was a fantastic encounter that saw us play our rivals in, in CD Estepona. It ended in a 1-1 draw. Really high quality game. Both teams pushing for the win. And um, my predictions say that both teams will be near the top of the division here and all come the end of the season. So um, fantastic support, as Jacob mentioned, from both sides of the club. And that will continue going into... Uh, the latter parts of the season, I'm sure. Substitution here from Kabir, so we apologise, we don't have the team sheet, so names are hard to come by, but uh, change it right back, it looks like, with 23 filling in and two pushing into centre-back position. One club, one family. So almost sounds like a song, that, doesn't it? I'll leave the Bob Marley out of this for the time being. <laughs> Usu there gets a little nudge on the clearance. Shaw is offside. <laughs> and it looks like centre back has just been booked there, unfortunately. It looks like a good descent again. Looks like Abia struggling to hold their frustrations in at this point. They've battled well in large majority of this game, but uh, the quality now is showing in. And another man there that's been exceptional today, Juan Nui, makes way for 22 that comes in. Jay, just a comment on uh, Juan Nui's performance today for me, if you could. I think his performances always go, they go unseen, you know, like I said earlier. Um, He's just, he's so consistent, makes the right decision all the time. And, you know, sometimes you don't see that. I might make a, a comparison to Busquets at Barcelona. I'm sure he'd absolutely love that comparison. But, you know, underrated, underrated. Yeah, great, great analysis there yet again from Thompson. Spanish analysis coming in clutch there. I think it's been a real team performance, Jacob. There's been some really strong individual ones, of course, but I wouldn't single like anybody out in particular at this stage and say that, you know, um, it's been it's been better than the collective. It's uh, required a lot of hard work on uh, from everyone's part. Right down to Alvaro Mato, who hasn't had a lot to do, but when he's been called upon, it's so important as a keeper that you do keep your uh, attention and composure, and uh, he's done so. So uh, a real team collective performance today as they line up another strike. 
I noticed that you held your breath there, Jacob, as you were expecting another uh, another screamer, potentially. I mean, it was going towards goal, and at, at this stage of the game, having scored a goal like that, confidence is very, very high. Absolutely. But to be honest, James, I couldn't agree with you more about the the comment that you made hasn't been a single individual that has really stood out, and it's been a really good collective performance. And I think... You can also put that down to how well the opposition have played, actually, because it's really taken a team performance to break down um, this really, really good opposition side. Yeah, well caught out there by Usu. Just well into layer, who got a springs well. Good read there by Serge. Another man who's gone a bit under the radar today. He's not been in, um, called upon too much on on the defensive aspect, but it's been, again, Mr. Consistent in there. He's technically exceptional and um, a real key figure in this squad. I'm sure will play a massive role moving forward. Great tackle there. The referee seems to have issued a yellow card there to, to Alvaro. Uh, looked like an honest challenge to me, but referee deems it necessary of a yellow card. We're just watching it there on the replay. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to contradict the referee, but I think on this occasion he might have got it wrong. It is a bit harsh, yeah, but we'll go with that. But we expect what the referee says and we get on with the game. Of course. What a beautiful evening, Jacob, as well as the floodlights start to come on. What's it like living in the south coast of Spain? Well, I've been very lucky to be coming to this part of the world for a long time, actually, and I've really fallen in love with the south coast of Spain. Um, it is absolutely stunning. And to be honest, Almanyeca is it really is a jewel in a very, very shiny piece of jewellery, you know? Great, um, great analysis there. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh, um, but yeah, no, it is, it is really nice to live here. And um, I'm actually very grateful to be able to call this my home for a large amount of the year. Absolutely scrappy play there, but Almanyeca look to break. Checking his own. Oh, Briggs tries to find Alvaro. I'm not sure if he's offside on this one. Le he leaves the ball. Jesus gets forward. Cuts the ball back. Briggs looks to find the ball, but it's cleared well by Kabir. So, real dangerous opening there for Almanyaka City. Really intelligent running, though, um, from the Almanyaka players, knowing that they're offside. Absolutely good recovery there from the from the City man. The game really opening up now. You can see tired legs obviously on Kabias' side. Understandable. First game of the season down to 10 men. Yeah. It. Oh, sorry. I was about I to say, you can really see the um, the separation now between the defensive um, structure and the attacking formation. You know, you can really see how they're playing a back four with a, a holding player and then, you know, a further four attacking players in front. Absolutely, the midfield line a little bit non-existent at the moment, but um, but yeah, absolutely. This is what Albuquerque City will look to do on this pitch. It's a big pitch, obviously. Uh, we know our abilities and our our capabilities, and we'll look to break teams down over the full 90. It doesn't have to happen in the first 10-15 um, minutes or the first half in particular, but uh, it's important that we stick to our values, move the ball side to side, and obviously the results are there to see with the opposition tiring as we move into the latter parts of the game. Usu commanding as always. Very unlucky there. Really well filled in by Luis Mi and the holding midfielder there. Noticing that um, the centre back was out of position and just filling the gap really, really quickly. More changes here to come. No Miguel making his way on, followed by Andrew, Adrian Toma. Sergio hobbling off there. Let's hope that's another one that's not that serious. Again, both men getting Jesus making way. Both men getting massive ovations there. They've been fantastic all day. Just going back to this setting, Jacob, there's very few things I'd rather be doing right now on a Sunday evening than watching the sun go down over uh, with some great football on the south coast of Spain. You know, it really is... A, a pleasure to commentate on such a fixture. Um, hopefully they'll have us back if, if we've done well enough, you know? It's not for me to say, but I think, fingers crossed, they'll have us back, you know?
Jokes aside though, James, it, it really is a stunning view, isn't it? And a pleasure to be here. The best seat in the house, obviously up here in the commentary box and fuse watching at home, you know. Alessandro brings breaks through there. He'll look to get a ball in the box, he cuts it back, Jimmy! Jimmy filling in late there and really looking dangerous. Oh my goodness, I thought we were going to see another uh, scorcher there, but not to be. I mean, we've been spoilt for finishes today already, so that would have been, that would maybe have been a little bit too much, you know. Too many phenomenal finishes in one game. The vertical play has been very, very good here from Almineca City. I know they've been working on this in training, trying to be a little bit more dynamic, but they've often found themselves getting in the pockets down the left and right hand side and often putting quality in the box that causes havoc for the defenders. So it's no surprise that we find ourselves three goals up, uh, three goals to the one up at the moment. Couple of changes here for Kabeas. <laughs> Seeing if he can liven things up. They're looking to get back into the game. Obviously, big ass with 10 men, but let's see if the red men can do that. Another player goes down holding his head. Referee, looks like he's reaching to his pocket again. And this time it's the manager that goes in the book. There's been a lot of cautions given today, Jacob. We don't like to see it as we course. We want to see the football, but the referee dishing them out like it's Christmas. Of course, we don't want to see the game, you know, split up too much and broken down. And George Jeremy, the club director, gets a round of applause from the uh, from the visiting fans. Replaced by number 25, Luca Rosana, another one of our young talents has come through the academy system. Great to see Luca, and another big hug there from Victor Franco. Jacob, you want to comment on George's performance today? Yeah, I think George's performance is really. He's really pushed the team on. I mean, obviously being captain and being a leader, not only within the club, but within this team, you know. Um, I think it's just, he really is a pivotal part of this squad and obviously the club as a whole, you know. Um, being, being the founder and owner. Oh, could be a break here. That's a great tackle there from Rosado, just on. Could be as disgusted at that decision, but for me, I'd have to see a replay, but that looked like a fair challenge to me. And it's not, it is, it's going to be more cards dished out here, Jacob. Yeah, you don't, you don't really want to see the cards coming out, but, you know, if the referee believes it's necessary, then, you know, it has to be done. And, and I'm being told here, another red card has been issued for arguing about the yellow card, which came from what I'm being told was a fair challenge. Unbelievable, it seems, here in, uh, in Almineca. Kabir's really losing their, their cool and their composure and down to nine men. Having taken their captain off and giving the armband to the number five, the number five has then gone, set, gone and got sent off. So very, very difficult situation um, for Kubieras right now. Another man what, making the familiar walk down the tunnel after following in the footsteps of his teammate who was sent off earlier today. Obviously not happy there from the, with the referee's decision. The referee looks like he's reaching again for a card. Another yellow card issued. Frustration here in the Aminaka side. They want to play football. They don't want to be seeing this either, but the referee deems it necessary. Exactly, you know, ideally I'm sure both sides would prefer to see a clean, flowing game and hopefully we can get to the end of this 90 minutes without too many more cards coming out. Absolutely. But a real chance here for, for goals galore for the Almineca team. Now I'd be interested to see how this last 10 minutes plays out. It 
it's a real shame, Jacob, because it's been a great display here from Almineca City. And this doesn't make it look as, as pretty, but a uh, real, real composed performance. Yeah, I think a really co composed performance from from both teams, you know. Um, I think the opposition have come here with a really good game plan, as as have we, and both teams have, have kind of executed well. Um, Kubias have come, on, come off worse, of, sure, of course. Um, and I mean, to finish, have to finish the game with nine men is really tough. Great, great ball there from, uh, from the Kubias player, but not able to, uh, not able to capitalise on that. And Luka Mzano with a great touch on the left-hand side results in a throw-in for Almineca City. Good hands from uh, coach there. From Victor Franco. Coach Victor Franco. Shout out to the backroom team as well because you know the players are the ones that get the, the plaudits on the field for obvious reasons and, and they deserve it after today's performance. Layers in. Oh, the goalkeeper misses the ball. And it's a four. I'm, I apologise. The goal will not come for this one, but um, great anticipation there by the forward and a deserved goal. Another player who was fairly new to the ranks and deserving of that goal, so great to see the young the young Spanish uh, player get a goal there, the young Spaniard. Good idea to save the voice, very good idea. Thank you. Jacob, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the last goal in the game today either. Yeah, I mean, given the situation of the, of the game, I mean, you can even see now that it looks as if the goalkeeper has gone down um, inside the box, you know. Um, the opposition really seem to be struggling at this point, and so, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult to predict. Maybe Almunyeka carry on, carry on pushing for more goals, or do they just sit back knowing that they've they've clinched the three points? You know, absolutely. And it's a unfortunate scenes here as the keeper stays down. Keeper's helped to his feet by his teammate. It looks like he's struggling there. Unfortunate scenes, but uh, the game must continue. The show must go on, Jacob, as they say. The show almost, always must go on. Always. Guys, we want to hear from you. We've had some great displays on an individual basis today. Let us know who you feel is your man of the match. Um, we can't do an official count, but we'd love to hear from you who you think stood out and who deserves that title. To put you on the spot, who would you give it to? <laughs> it's a very, very difficult question, and um, I'd say there's been a few standout performers to me. I'd, I'd say Alessandro Briggs, obviously leading the line, getting the goal, um, you know, definitely deserved. Or he's up there with a shout. Charlie Balman, another one. George Jeremy. I can name the whole team to be honest with you, Jacob. And I'm just gonna go through um, one by one, so I'll save you the account. But um, I think Alessandro Briggs with the goal he's got today, the energy. Uh, and the bit of quality that's shown is, is definitely deserving to be up there. Um, and he would be my vote. Alvaro noticed the keep off the, off the goal line there and goes for the, the chip. Can I just say, very political yeah. response there. Jake, very, I, I, very and political. And I'm going to flip that one back on you, sir. It's not an easy question at all. Who are you going to go with? Ah, <sighs> That's a tough one. Um, <laughs> you know what? I think you are right. Alessandro Briggs, someone you didn't mention, who I think has played really, really well. Um, Luis me in the first half very very energetic was involved in so many different um, really nice passes of play down the left hand side with Charlie another player that you mentioned slightly slightly more quiet at second half but has had a very very good performance today absolutely definitely worthy of the shout the thing is you know being involved in this team and seeing them play week one week that's the usual standard for Luis me you know he's always very very good um, he's got quality um, that he's shown today and um, he's, a, he's a consistently high performer so definitely worthy of a, of a mention there like you say uh, but don't be surprised if he's if he's producing the same um, in the next game very important thing to mention as well here Jacob is uh, three games this week in the first week of the season so we play today uh, midweek on Wednesday I believe and then we're playing again next next week uh, next Sunday uh, so a massive week for the club. It's important that you come away with as many points as possible, obviously start of the season and set the standard for the rest to follow. So it'll be important to conserve legs. Um, you know, obviously a tough ass, big pitch um, and another two important games to come in the, in the latter parts of this week. So 
for sure. Sounds as if the games are coming thick and fast. Um, but like you said, that's when the, um, the strength of the squad really, really comes in, you know. But how good is it, Jacob, to have football back? Oh, so good. It is absolutely phenomenal to have football back. And I know we've said it so many times already, but to have good a still crowd back Rosano. in the stadium. Absolutely. And I think after what was such a tough year for so many people, you know, um, this year promises to be uh, one of the best yet. You know, a lot to look forward to, a lot of important games ahead of us. And, and just to be back playing, um, having fans in the stadium, as you mentioned, you know, just the little things that you took for granted pre-COVID, uh, such a joy to see. And, you know, we've got a season full of it to look forward to. Great play there. Interplay there. Louise B again, like you say, running down the... what. The line. Lucas De Paula's gone Charlie Malman for the man of the match. And you know, Luca, I can't argue with you. He was phenomenal today. Shame to see him go off injured there. Like we said, probably resting legs for the rest of the week, but uh, definitely worthy of a mention. So Jacob, tell me, where do we go from here? We're obviously a very good performance. What, what areas do you think we can improve on going into the, uh, to the second or third game uh, of the season that later on in the week? Honestly, that is a very, very d difficult question. Having seen such a convincing performance today, uh, that's, that is a very, very tough one. Honestly, more of the same, if I'm honest. More of the same, you know, defensively very solid, really creative and fl flowing, you know, very fluid in possession and clinical, clinical going forward. So, Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's tough. It's very tough to actually um, critique a performance that's been this convincing. I think you're absolutely right there. I think like, like we mentioned earlier on, you know, I've been followed Aminaka City through the preseason um, sometimes clinical, uh, our clinical nature, we were lacking a little bit. Sometimes possession was good and we struggled to be more dynamic and vertical. Uh, and sometimes defensively, we weren't always looking as solid, but it looks like we've really put the three together today and uh, the results have been there to see. Obviously, games will get harder on this. You're not always going to play on as great a surface as this uh, in stadiums like this, and there'll be some important away games that really require us to dig in and win, win ugly. But I think that's a sign of a, of a, true, you know, a true champion. Uh, championship winning team so uh, they're the questions that have still got to be answered but um, looking at this group and not only the ability what a ball offside given not only the ability of the players but also the characters I'm looking at the experience in there Sergi, uh, George, uh, Charlie you know Ivan Moyer at the back these are experienced players that have played a number of games at this level and it's going to be really really interesting to see as we get into those really important fixtures moving forward yeah I agree actually I think you touched on something there which is so important and is actually, it is the character. It really is the character and the personality of the players because at this level, everyone has ability, you know? Everyone has their strengths and their weaknesses and a lot of the time, more strengths than weaknesses, you know? And so it really is the character of the players to be able to, to deal with the, the pressure and in the, the tough moments of the game. Absolutely. As we enter the last few minutes of the uh, the second half here, I mean, Eka, as we suspect, obviously with the nine men of the base, really dominating possession and moving the ball around well. Dutri there moves to the to the wide position, looking to just control and see out the rest of this game. It's important to note as well. You know, it's 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 well uh, well known that Aminaka City have the ambition uh, to be right up there as uh, as one of the sides, you know, favourites for a promotion this year, and that means that every team that comes here, especially to our home and our stadium, wants to beat us. They bring their A game and they bring great attitudes, and sometimes play at that 110% level. So um, we'll have to stay disciplined, stay focused. We've obviously seen the referee here. Um, you know, likes to dish out cards, and luckily we've kept our cool and composure in that regard. But keeping key men healthy and fit and uh, not suspended is going to be key in terms of uh, the title challenge and promotion this year. Great strike there, but again, Mata. 
comes to the rescue. What a save, Jacob. To reiterate what you said earlier, he hasn't had much to do this game, but when he's called upon, boy, does he deliver, you know? Unlucky not to get the clean sheet, you think? Very, very unlucky. But, you know, hats off to that finish because it was something special. Yeah, definitely. We'll look to get that one going again when we have the chance, but um, an unbelievable strike there from the Cabeas uh, player. And Briggs with the Megs, again, darted in field. He loves to cut onto that left foot and bag one from distance. He has the ability to do to do so. Follows up with what looked like a frustration, frustrated tackle there. He's actually he doesn't deem it willing of a card there. He's but. very lucky has, he hasn't made contact with the player there. Because if he makes contact with the player, that's easily a yellow. I mean, was he off the ground? Could have been even a red card, you know? Absolutely, but... Um, you know, it's not in his nature. Obviously, a bit of frustration there, but I'm sure he's not mean to, uh, you know, to hurt the player. So, right decision in all, I think, there from the referee. Again, guys, if you're not already, follow us on social media uh, at CD Almineca City and, and also at FC Malaga City to stay up to date with all the action, the upcoming games, time, streams, everything that you need to stay involved with the club uh, will be posted there, okay? So, make sure... Um, that you follow us this week and obviously moving forward as it's going to be a really, really exciting season. Good steal there from Rosano. Puts Torre through. Oh, looks for the pass and he finds him. Offside though. Missed opportunity there from the Albuquerque City boys. Jacob, any comments that you want to add as we, as we look to wrap things up here? I think at the beginning of the game, we really talked about how important it is to st set the tone for the season, you know, and start off the season with the three points, with a good performance. And, I mean, they've done exactly that. They really have. To, to wrap things up well, you know, for the end of this game, they've done exactly what they needed to do. They've come here with a plan. They've executed it. They've won the game. They've got the three points. On to the next one, I guess. It's a fantastic point, and um, we'll see if we can get another one to end this game on a real high. But it's been a fantastic performance here from the Almineca City players. Um, we're looking at the bench now. I think five, five substitutions used, uh, and still that tempo and intensity has been kept throughout. So really impressed with what we've seen here today, and uh, bodes well for the rest of the season. Goalkeeper kicks side volley three. But look at that effort there. Three see the Ambedeca City players chasing him down. And that's the final whistle. The score ends here. 4 1 at full time. See the Ambedeca City coming away here for the victory. Jacob. Thank you ever so much for joining me here today. Uh, always a pleasure and always welcome whenever you want to uh, hop on. Thank you so much for having me. And I think just to wrap things up, I would say convincing. Convincing is probably the word I'm going to go for with this performance. Absolutely. A lot of hugs, a lot of high fives, a, a lot of smiles on faces from the Army Naked City camp. And um, what a day it's been. A uh, beautiful evening to round up what's been a great day of football. And uh, we only hope that we can have more of these in store as the season progresses. Uh, Jacob, any, any final comments? No, actually, it's been a pleasure to be here. And, um, yeah, what a, what a performance from the boys. And long may this continue. Just want to say a big shout-out to all our viewers watching from home and on our stream. Um, we always appreciate the support from wherever you are around the world. So from us here in Almireca, signing off. Gotcha, gotcha. No, do it, Miro. Go, Esther. Go, Esther. Yes. 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 Y